Greetings, wise ones. This is Melissa of Eighth House Wisdom, author, psychotherapist, astrologer, feminine energy, and stellar planning expert. I'm here with my favorite Zodiac season video to make. We are talking about the beginning of Scorpio season, Eighth House energy, and what we are going to need to do to access the transformational powers and be a magician in our own lives. We're also going to be talking about the fall eclipse portal. If you would like to know more about what will be occurring for us in the next 30 days for this amazing and powerful season. Stay tuned for the rest of the video. So, here we are at my favorite time of the year. I myself, am a Scorpio native born at zero degrees Scorpio and my business eighth house wisdom is also a Scorpio native established at 29 degrees Scorpio so you get the alpha and the omega when you come to me and eighth house wisdom when it comes to talking about Scorpio energy. I am deeply immersed in it. And though it may scare many people, it's something I revel in. On the 23rd of October at 6.35 a.m., the sun will move into Scorpio, opening up our connection with the other side of the veil, the underworld, deeper connections to shadow and our ancestors. On the same day, Aquar the Aquarius retrograde of Saturn will be ending, so we'll experience a little release and less formality. And then just two days later, we will have the coordinating new moon in Scorpio, which will actually be a new moon solar eclipse. That's going to give us a really big new beginning. It's going to force us because that's the energy of eclipses. And then just three days after that, Jupiter is going to move back into Pisces. In its retrograde motion, which is going to give us a harmonious aspect between the sun and Jupiter for two months, that's really going to help us open and expand. Yet two days later, Mars, the traditional ruler of Scorpio, full of warring and dynamic energy, will begin its retrograde in the sign of Gemini, which is going to form more of a tense aspect to the Scorpio sun and may disturb a bit of our relationship equilibrium, though we are releasing many planets in retrograde now, so there will be an ebb and a flow of how the energies are moving backwards and forwards. It's really going to be important for us to note that for this next 30 days of 8th house Scorpio energy, again, as I said at the top of the video, the veil is thin and so communication with the unseen will increase. Opportunities to engage in ancestor veneration and to honor and participate in celebrations like Dia de los Muertos, Samhain, 
or Halloween, um, All Hallows Eve or All Saints Day, which all tend to fall around the same time and also coordinate with the wheel of the year. Um, they're there for us to tap into and harness this power. And it, I think it's beautiful that no matter what relig major religious sect you are a part of, there is some acknowledgement of the power of the shadow and the power of the unseen during this particular period of time. So that's going to cause us to really need to activate our inner magician. The magician is the archetype that Scorpio uh, falls under, the magician and the, um, and the alchemist. Um, in order to transform for the highest good of all concerned, we're really going to need to close our eyes, embrace the dark and the shadows, and feel our way through this thrust of evolution that's going to happen because Scorpio season and eclipse season are going to be one in the same. We are very lucky that the modern day ruler of Scorpio, Pluto, came out of retrograde on October the 8th. So again, we're having more push and pull. Scorpio season is really full of a large number of astrological occurrences um, involving major planets, most of which are Saturn, Neptune, Jupiter, and Mars. The list is so long, I will not go through it all here in this video. But if you're interested, make sure to head over to my blog so you can check out those specific dates. But I will focus on the overarching things that we need to do to apply Scorpio season stellar planning for the next 30 days. First and foremost, we need to remember that this is a 30-day period where we are focused on the water element and the water element represents emotional and spiritual energy that's going to pierce the veil of the underworld and the unseen and the realm of the ancestors the shadows as well as the feminine and in particular the dark feminine it's important for us to note feminine energy is darkness the vacuum is the womb the vacuum does not hold light just like a black moon uh, excuse me a black hole does not therefore and the vacuum slash moon is the definition of feminine energy when we are not talking binary about gender but when we are talking about form and function things come to be and come in ex come into existence in the vacuum that is a holding space for things to be formed we emerge into the light when we pass through the vacuum and out into the world and then we have the opportunity to do and doing energy is masculine energy and so we need to remember that Scorpio season is all about the feminine and the dark feminine this is not Shirley Temple feminine this is Kali Pele goddess energy right Shiva destroyer of worlds Pele and Kali who also deal with fire and transformational energy and we have to learn not to become scared of this because Scorpio is one of the four fixed signs that hold up the corners of the earth and it is the sign that anchors the fall season so even though we have all of those potent images Really, that is our way to stay fixed and anchored in this energy. And it's also why this ener fixed energy is uh, spoken of as authority energy by the Astro Twins. Because as an anchoring point, Scorpio energy makes it 
it's business to know all that there is about the time and space it exists in. It becomes the manager and the expert and authority on all things around it. A really good example of what that looks like as a tarot reader, I always conjure the image of the world card when I'm talking about the fixed signs. And if you are into tarot, then you will understand what I'm saying. But if not, when you look at this image above, what you will see is the fixed signs literally holding up the diagonal corners of the image. It's really evoking within us the idea that these are the signs that put roots, anchor, and stabilize us. And when we look at the wheel of the year, which coordinates with the seasons and dovetails with astrology and is the practice of natural spiritual observation of what happens as the earth turns and as the days of our lives turn, all of the cross Sabbath holidays that exist on the wheel of the year actually occur during the fixed sign seasons of every year. Aquarius, the Maverick in winter is associated with Involic or Candlemas. Taurus, the builder energy is associated with spring and Beltane. Leo, the king queen energy in summer is associated with Lama. And Scorpio, the magician in fall is associated with Samhain. And yes, these are all Gaelic words, so they are not said the way they're spelled. That's just a visual reminder for us about the fact that stellar planning is based in keen observations over millennia of time related to the ebb and flow and also the process through which nature rolls out events in a relatively predictable manner. We know that when we come to Samhain and Imbolic, that we are going to be dealing with the darkness because those are the shadow signs of the year. These celebrations are designed to help us to learn how to appreciate the dark side of life for the contrast that it brings because Without darkness, we would not know life. This, we live in a world of duality. So we need to ensure that we don't go all the way to doom and gloom. Scorpio season is a really good time to schedule looking at estate planning, attending to your inheritance, creating a living will and power of attorney. Oh, and dealing with your taxes too, because death and taxes are both Scorpio ruled areas of life. I want us to try to think about doing this and evoking a sense of joy, not doom and gloom, because darkness does not have to equate bad or evil or negativity, unless you're talking about negative space, unless we choose to make that pairing, right? What we need to be focusing on are the subtle intuitive hits that we're going to get, the things that we feel and sense when we close our eyes and we are not using our known senses that trigger the mind, but we're using our felt senses that trigger the body. When it comes to stellar planning, you really need to ask yourself what shadow work you're going to do for your highest good over the next 30 days. And you want to pair that with thinking about the Scorpio season body wisdom because Scorpio rules the genitals, the reproductive system, and the rectum. Pretty much all the parts of our body that we like to keep 
secret and that either produced our magical power to bring life into existence or help us to eliminate that which we do not need so we stay alive. People always joke and talk about how intense Scorpios are, what great lovers they are. And that can be very true. Scorpio people have a strong association with sex because sex is ruled by their sign after coming out of the Libra uh, energy of relationships and partnerships the next thing to overlay is sex however not every Scorpio is over sex some of us are asexual in nature because of the tie-in between sex and power and because Expressing one's sexuality, which is a life-affirming energy, really has a lot to do with how comfortable we are with ourselves. And sex is one of the only energy forms that engages all sense senses. So you need to be able to experience light and dark and handle that container in order to be in the best places when it comes to that. Now, remember, scorpions are deep and dark like the ocean when we think about their water. The bottom of the ocean has no light. There's a whole world down there that we cannot see. This is the visual that I generally hold. And it will be good for us to have water flowing through our systems after the Libra season body wisdom of working to balance our energy levels and detoxify our systems through our kidneys and adrenals, both of which are organs that come in pairs, hence the Libra Association. Now we really need to focus on elimination and letting go as the wheel of the year turns. Pleasure, power, and pain are all things that are associated with the Scorpio access now is your time to explore your relationship to them for your health. Please know that repressing your feelings and denial of any dark, Im darker, shadowy impulses or sexual things in life will not win you points with your body or your health now. It will trap potent energy in your first and second chakras that can result in lower back pain as well as sexual and elimination dysfunctions and illness. So this is what we really need to get on top of. And I urge us to do that because we are approaching the eclipse on October 25th. And we really want to be prepared to handle that. And our body is a resonance chamber to allow that to occur. So we need to keep our body in tip-top shape in order to support that in happening. I'm not going to go too much into eclipses right now because I'll be talking about that in the new moon video that will be coming out soon. However, I do want to note that eclipses are historically kingmakers and world event predictors. So this is a really potent time for big world changes. We've already seen that in Liz Truss stepping down as the prime minister of Great Britain only 44 days into her tenure she went in hated um, and she left very quickly making her the shortest term prime minister in Great Britain's 300 some year um, governmental history expect to see more of that showing up in our lives as we move closer to the actual eclipse moment but know that the energy signature is already in play as we move through this portal and so the thing i really want to focus on is tap into your body wisdom so that you are effectively purging unprocessed sadness and emotions and that your body and energy are ready to handle the two eclipses that will be coming and will be activating our security and secure 
access or our power and control access and will bring up things that we experienced back in April 30th and May 16th when the coordinating eclipses from the spring occurred. I hope that this has been an enlightening video for you just about the dynamics of Scorpio energy and has helped you think about the ways that you can best manage the transformation that is on the way to you like the inner magician that each one of us has in order to really get the color and dimension of that you're going to need to first head over to my blog so that you can check out what the house that Scorpio rules in your chart does to give the 8th house energy deeper dimension. For me, my 6th house of work and service is ruled by Scorpio. So I have a depth when it comes to my work, my service, and my understanding of illness. And that tracks directly with the kind of work that I do in my personal life experience. So you'll need to know that. But in order to know what house Scorpio is in your chart, you'll also need to head over to my website so you can get a free copy of your birth chart. That way you'll be able to apply all of the information related to stellar planning that I spoke about here with the greatest level of accuracy. And when you're done with that, you can always stop off at my lovely crystal vendor using this coupon code, Eighth House Wisdom, for an 11% discount. Working with many of those Libra crystals that I talked about in my last video, and any black crystal will be very helpful as we prepare our world and our environment for the upcoming eclipse energy. I hope that each and every one of you make it a point to shift your relationship with the darkness and the shadows to one that is positive. And if there's any time that you could do it, now would be that time. Remember that life does come with an instruction manual. It is written in the stars. And I would be honored to help you do this shadow work as a double Scorpio native between my sun sign and my business sun sign. There's information about getting a reading from me in the description box below. Please make sure to like this video, comment, and subscribe if you got something great out of it. And until next time, wise ones, happy 8th house season. Sending you lots of light and love. Take care.